This is going to be our review session for exam 3, which is going to cover chapter 5 and 6. And this is CHEM 202. Let me go over some of the types of problems you're going to have in that exam. And make sure you try working on similar problems. One of the questions I'm going to ask you about the benzene ring would be, whenever you have two substituent groups attached to the benzene ring, there are three possible uh, isomers. One is called ortho, the other one is called meta, the other one is called para. So I'm going to show you what is ortho. This is Cl and then I. This is ortho. In one, two location, they're bonded. So this is ortho coro iodobenzene. Make sure you know these names. The substituent group is come if it's halogen, it becomes coro, bromo, iodo. So this is ortho. This is meta. So this is the meta isomer, meta coro iodobenzene. Usually we go by alphabetic ordering, C and then I when there are substitution groups. And this is going to be para. In order to remember which one is ortho, which one is meta, and which one is para, I used to remember at your age uh, by thinking about drawing a P like this. Going from first substituent to the last next substituent group and you can imagine that this is like a P. So that's para. Ortho you can imagine an O. That's ortho. Meta you can imagine M which is kind of in this case sideways. So other way of remembering it would be one two positions would be ortho, one three would be meta and one four would be para. So there would be a question, question on that just to test whether you understand uh, which one is ortho, which one is meta, and which one is para. Before I go over the next types of problems, I would like to go over when do you expect ortho para directors, I'll explain to you, and activators and deactivators. So my topic of discussion would be ortho para directors, and then I'll go over specific problems that you have in exam. Activators, deactivators. Now let me first explain to you what I mean by ortho para director. If you read the book already, you probably have some idea about it. If I have a benzene ring, If I'm going to react this with, say, nitric acid and sulfuric acid, a nitro group is going to get attached here. That would give me nitrobenzene. But it can go anywhere. On the other hand, if I have, for example, an alkyl group, uh, it could be any alkyl group. Say I have CH2, CH2, CH3. Methane, ethane, propane. So that becomes propyl. So this is a propyl benzene. If I have a propyl benzene, and if I'm reacting with, say, Br2, FeBr3 is the catalyst, it would go, it's going to attach to Br, but that Br can only go to this or this location. In other words, this group, alkyl group attached to the benzene ring, would be ortho para directors. So let me write down this product. CH2, CH2, CH3. This is one of the products would be ortho, and the other one is going to be para. CH2, CH2, CH3, and BR is going to be here. 
and these are the two major products and there will be almost no meta products. So this tells me that alkyl group attached to the benzene ring would be ortho para reactor. So let me write down here alkyl group. Now in case you don't remember what alkyl group is, methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, pentyl, those are all alkyl groups. So alkyl groups would be ortho para directors. That means when something else is getting bonded, that will be directed towards ortho or para location. And that's why they're called ortho para directors. Now, what else could be ortho para directors? Let me write down. If instead of having alkyl, if I have OH group, I'd like you to know these common names. Benzene with attached OH is called phenol. So this now becomes phenol, but you need to look at more carefully what phenol, what kind of bonds you have in the phenol. Oxygen has two bonds and two pairs of electrons. This is also going to be ortho and para directors. So now my products is going to be again OH here, OH here. So it would be helpful if you write down structure like this so that you know the, bond, the atom which is directly bonded to the benzene ring whether it has pairs of electrons, unshared pairs of electrons or not. If they do have unshared pairs of electrons, they would be ortho para directors. So this tells me in which cases I can get ortho para directors. So any group that I've, I attach here, if it is an alkyl, is going to be ortho para or any group that has an atom with unshared electron pair directly bonded to the benzene ring would also be ortho para director. So what other groups could it be? I can have NH2. Now if you want to write down NH2 like this, it would be a lot helpful. This is attached to the benzene ring, NH2. And then you have a pair of electron here. Again, I have a pair of electron on nitrogen. So that is also going to be ortho para. So keep this in mind that any group that you're bonding here, if that has pair of electron, un, un, unshared pair of electron, or non-bonding electron pair, would be ortho para directors. Now, we're going to explain to you why do you expect ortho para directors for this kind of molecules. So, let me go over this now, so that you can understand why these are ortho para directors. Now we are going to explain that on the basis of resonance. That why phenol is ortho para director. Now, let me show you what resonance structures look, would look like for this compound. OH. Pair of electron here. Remember, it must have two pairs of electrons, and these are the two pairs of electrons. Now, I'm saying that this, this compound, having these two pairs of electrons, it can donate this electron pair to this carbon. Now, this carbon would have too many bonds. Now, remember, I've been telling you that in a neutral compound, carbon must have four bonds, not more than four. Now, here, whenever I have a double bond in here, now this carbon would have too many bonds. Let's account for all the bonds. This has one, two, three, four. So I already have four bonds. So if I bring electron pair here, temporarily that would have five bonds. So let me show you how that works. Now I have a pair of, this electron pair is going to remain there. And this is, now at this point, this would have too many bonds because I had a bond in here, double bond in here, so that has to break. So in other words, when this comes in, this has to break and dump its electron pair onto that carbon. So this carbon now has extra electron, that's why it's minus. But if you get the formal charge for this oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, that means take the half of bonding pair and add that non-bonding pair. So it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you'd be counting as if there are 5 electrons around oxygen. But the 
Number of valence electrons per oxygen is 6, because if you look at the element, location of oxygen in periodic table, and you count from left to the right along the line where you have oxygen, you'd count 6 electrons. So it's a S2P4. 2S to 2P4, that would be 6. So this had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you have one fewer electron because of the sharing, so it gets plus. So this side gets plus, this side gets minus. So this is how one of those resonance structure would look like. But look at here where the charge concentration is. It's in ortho place. In ortho position, there is an electron concentration. So it's going to invite the new group coming to this ortho location. Now, if I go further, because there will be other resonance structure possible, if this electron pair comes down here, then this would have too many bonds. So this has to dump its electron pair onto that carbon. So what what does it mean? So I get the third resonance structure, so this is going to be 2OH with the electron pair here. This is still plus. And this electron pair okay, is now making a double bond in here. And now there is an electron pair in here with extra electron, and that gets minus. So this is going to be my structure 1, this is 2, this is 3. In the same way I can draw other ones that is going to concentrate electron on ortho. So basically, whenever you have pairs of electrons on these atoms, which is directly attached to the benzene ring, you'd see concentration of negative charge in ortho and para location. That means when you have electron concentration, that means it's going to invite something positive for attachment because you need electron pair for making bonds. So basically, there'll be greater concentration of electron on ortho and para location, and that's why these are ortho para directors. And that's true for any element or any compound with electron pairs directly, uh, atom with electron pair directly attached to the benzene ring. So, on the basis of resonance, we can explain why this type of groups are ortho para directors. Now, what would happen if I have halogen bonded? It could be chlorine, bromine, or iodine. So let's assume that I have chlorine in here. In exam, we usually don't show these electron pairs, but you'd have to find out uh, those electron pairs by drawing Lewis structure, especially for the atom, which is directly bonded to the benzene ring. So this is how it would be shown. But then you'd know that this is Cl. It must have eight bonds, eight electrons around. I've already one bond or a pair of electrons. That means I need six other electrons around Cl. And that's why we have two, four, six electrons around Cl. Now, again, it's the same thing. This element has a pair of electrons, so it can donate to this ring. So it'd be ortho para directors. So from this example, you see that you can readily predict which ones are going to be ortho para directors. So again, let me repeat this. Alkyl groups attached to the benzene ring or groups with electron pair that can, be, that can, it can donate to benzene ring. So it would be like this, unshared electron pair onto the atom directly bonded to the benzene ring would be ortho para directors. Now, how do I then understand that alkyl groups are ortho para directors? Let's draw one alkyl group. Methyl benzene, the common name is toluene. And I would like you to know these common names. There's a listing of all these common uh, names uh, in, a, in, a, in a table. So make sure you uh, go over them and try to remember them. So this is toluene or methyl benzene. Now this is also ortho para reactors, even though it, there is no electron pair here. This is for a different reason. We call hyperconjugation, not resonance. Hyperconjugation. We don't cover hyperconjugation in Chem 202, but in Chem 210, we cover that. So at this point, I'm just telling you that this is how this hyperconjugation looks like. This is just to give you some understanding that why alkyl groups are 
or the paradigm. So for alkyl group, you must have at least one hydrogen bonded. So in other words, it has, say for example, this hydrogen is bonded here. Now, this pair of electron comes down here, then this electron goes here. So my first hyperconjugated structure would look like this. C double bond. And then this H would remain as plus, it gets separated. And then electron would be in here, and that's minus. Plus, minus, that makes it neutral, and originally neutral. So this is one of those hyperconjugated structures, and there will be several others uh, of hyperconjugated structures. And because of this hyperconjugation, alkyl groups are also ortho para directors. Now, then anything other than these would be meta directors. So that makes your life easier to understand. Now, let's draw a few structures that you would know whether it's ortho or para directors or meta directors. Say I have given you COOH. The common name for this compound is benzoic acid, and make sure you know it. If you write down this part, it would be a lot easier for you to understand whether it's going to be ortho para director or meta director. This is, remember, carbon must have four bonds, so I have C. O, O, H. Now, in order to make it four bonds, it has to be it's double bonded here. You cannot have a double bond here, because if you have a double bond here, then oxygen would have three bonds. I mean, normally oxygen would have two bonds and two pairs of electrons. So, this is going to be C O, O, H. So, we'd be examining this particular atom, which is directly bonded to the benzene ring. So that atom does not have any pair of electron, doesn't have any uh, non-bonding pair. Secondly, it's not an alkyl group. So it neither, it's neither an alkyl group nor a group where atom has non-bonding pair to be shared with benzene ring. So this is going to be meta directors. So keep that in mind. You have to analyze like this. And you can also show that in terms of uh, resonance structures. This time resonance is go the other way you'd find that ortho and para would not have that many resonance structures. Only meta attachment would have more uh, resonance structures for carbocation. In book, those uh, structures are given. But for quick understanding, if I were you, I'd just focus on these, that alkyl group or halogens or groups with OH, like NH2, having pairs of electrons, they're all ortho para directors. Others are meta directors. Okay, I mistakenly wrote down metal there. It's the meta directors. Now let's write down one more structure. NO2. Say my question is uh, I forgot whether it's an ortho director or para director. This is not the same as NH2. Keep that in mind. So you need to write down this part more explicitly. So let's write down that, because other, other than, otherwise you can't understand whether it's an ortho para director or meta director. This would look like this, N, three bonds, we already have, this is no longer uh, usual uh, nitrogen compound where we have three bonds, here you'd have four bonds, and that's why you have a pluses and minuses in this case. So this would have two, four, six. This part has minus because I have one extra electron here, two, four, six, seven, and that's minus, and this has one, two, three, four, four on nitrogen, it's, uh, uh, number of valence electrons, five, so it's plus here. The plus here, minus here, that makes it uh, neutral. So NO2 look, look like this, and there is no, there is no pair of electron, unshared pair of electron, or a non bonding pair of electron and nitrogen to be shared with benzene ring. So, this is also going to be a meta director. Now, let's uh, give you one more example and then we'll give you specific uh, reactions that will be on the test.
Say I have this compound. It's written down like this, CO, CH3. Again, we need to write down this explicitly so that we can understand. Okay, so this is COCH3 in here. Again, I don't have this carbon with pairs of electrons, nor this is an alkyl group. So it's not an alkyl group, nor is the group with pair of electron on the atom directly bonded to benzene ring. So this is again a meta director. And make sure you know this name. This is acetophenone. It's a, it's a common name that you'd find in the table, and you'll have to know it. Let's try one more. O C two H five. This is ethoxy benzene. This is ethyl group. Ethoxy benzene. Again, let's write down more clearly this part so that I can understand. This is O. Remember, phenol had O H, so H is replaced by C two H three. So it's going to be C and another C. So C2, and keep in mind, oxygen has two bonds and two pairs of electrons that make altogether eight electrons around oxygen. So now, if I'm going to examine this, I have pairs of electron, unshared pairs of electrons in oxygen, so this is going to be ortho pair. So this tells you how we, you can quickly predict which ones are ortho para directors and which ones are meta directors because this would be helpful when you write down products of reactions that I'm, to, I'm going to go over now. Before I go over the specific type of reactions, I must also mention about activates and deactivators. I have a halogen, even though it's an ortho para director, but halogen is highly electronegative. It pulls electron away from the benzene ring. It's an inductive effect. Being more electronegative from carbons, this pulls electron away from carbon, and that in terms pulls electron from the benzene ring. So basically, benzene ring would not have that high concentration of negative charge. So its reactivity would go down, and that's why we call it deactivator. So other than halogens, so what are the what are the deactivators? Halogens, even though they're ortho para directors, but they're all deactivators. And all the other meta directors are alpha deactivators, like NO2, COOH. So this type of compounds are also deactivators. So if I were you, I remember like this, halogens, even though they're ortho para directors, they're deactivators. NO2, COOH, all these meta directors, almost all meta directors are deactivators because they suck electron out of the benzene ring and benzene would show less activity. So what are activators then? So these are deactivators. Alkyl group. Again, it's a hyperconjugated effect. So if I have an alkyl group like this, so this is without the hydrogen I'm showing you. So this is activator. Because they would push electron into that benzene ring. So in, in, Benzene ring would have more electron, and more electron means greater attraction towards anything positive that is coming towards the benzene ring. So that's why it's activator. Other ortho para directors are all activators except the halogens. So I have NH2. NH2 is an 
pH to have a pair of electrons so it can donate it at the same time is pushing electron into the benzene ring so that's also activators so ortho para directors accept halogens so all ortho para directors except halogens are activators that means they would enhance the reaction substitution reaction on the benzene ring by their presence so, so far we covered when to expect ortho para direct directors uh, for different groups and activators and deactivators. Now, I'm going to show you specific reactions now, and I think you can understand it better now. I'll give you a question on on the basis of activators and deactivators. Say, for example, these three compounds are given. One has Cl here, another has CH2CH3. That's ethyl benzene. This is chlorobenzene. And then the third one would have CH2. CH2Cl. Now, keep in mind, we are asking about which one would show, show most reactivity in among these three. So let's write that down one, two, and three. Towards substitution reaction, we call it electrophilic aromatic substitution. Say, for example, when Br comes in, it would come as Br plus. Remember, Br2, FeBr3, when you add this, it's going to create Br plus. And that Br plus, the other one Br minus, this Br plus is attracted. This is going to attach to FeBr3, so if it becomes FeBr4 minus, if you want to write down the whole thing. So this Br plus will be attracted to the benzene ring. Now question is, which benzene ring would show the maximum attraction? or show greatest activity. This is deactivated, directly bonded, so it will be least reactive. So this is going to be least reactive towards benzene attachment. Keep in mind these are all ortho and para directors. So this is the least reactive because your halogen is directly bonded to the benzene ring. This is activator, so this is going to be most reactive. And this would be next in line. So this is going to be most reactive because of the alkyl group being bonded, which releases electron, makes it electron rich. It sucks electron out, so least reactive. And this would be next to number two. So most and second reactive, and this is the least reactive. So make sure you know how to predict uh, something like this. Next, we're going to discuss a number of reactions. One of them is a very important reaction called Frito Crafts. Crafts. Alkylation and acylation. So Frito Crafts alkylation and Acylation. Now I'm going to show you how this works. Let's begin with a benzene uh, with ethyl group bonded. Okay. Now keep in mind I left out hydrogen. So each corner except here has one hydrogen, one hydrogen, one hydrogen, one hydrogen, no hydrogen because we'd have uh, four bonds to this carbon. So keep in mind, each corner has a carbon. So this is ethyl benzene. Now, if I'm going to add to this ethyl benzene, I can, I can add several different uh, compounds, like methyl chloride, for example. And aluminum chloride is the catalyst. What aluminum chloride does, it picks 
Cl, it removes Cl and CH3 becomes plus, CH3 plus. Then it gets attracted to the benzene ring. Now, what kind of group is this? Ethyl group is? This is alkyl group. So it'd be ortho -car. So right away I know that this methyl group is going to be bonded to ortho and para positions only and very slight amount of, of meta product. So, so this is one of the products. This is ortho and the other product is So these are the two products you're going to get. Primarily, these are the two products you're going to get. This is ortho and para directors. Now, in acylation, let's do that. In alkylation, you have attached an alkyl group. In acylation, you have CH3, C double bond, O, Cl. The mechanism is the same. ALCL3 is going to grab the Cl, and that's going to form CH3C plus double bond O, and that will be attracted to the benzene ring. Again, it's going to be ortho para products. Be careful, only remove that CL. And then point of attachment will be here, where this uh, CL was, because these are all filled in. You can't make an attachment in anywhere else. So this C will be bonded, so C double bond O and CH3. So make sure you double check this. C has, this is the point of attach, attachment where the point where this uh, benzene ring is going to be attached. And then there'll be two oxygen and one metal group. So this is going to be C double bond O CH3. So these are again ortho and paraprax. So I can give a question on alkylation, acylation, or both. So I make sure you do those kind of problems. Let's do additional problems so that we get used to it, how to predict the products. Instead of having an alkyl group, let's have a different group there, NO2 group. NO2, now remember that NO2 is written down like this, and that's NO2. And that's meta director. So this is going to be meta director. So that means whatever I'm going to attach is going to go to the meta place predominantly. Say I'm going to have SO3 in presence of H2SO4. And that's going to attach SO3H. So you need to know this kind of reactions. But this is not going to be in ortho and para positions, it's going to go to meta position. So uh, the product is going to be this. And these are the simpler names to know. This is meta, then you can write down nitro, benzene, and FO3H makes it sulfonic acid. Acid. So you should try this kind of problems. If I have, on the other hand, something like this, OH group is going to be ortho para. That means SO3 is going to be in ortho and para positions. Say I have acetophenone. This is acetophenone. It's a common name. And I'm doing the same thing as a 3 in presence of H2SO4. Or I'm adding, say, Br2 
FEBR3. Now the question is, where would I expect my product? Again, acetophenol. This carbon doesn't have uh, unshared pairs of electron and also it's not an alkyl group. So that's why it's going to be a meta director. So once it's a meta director, I only get one product here. So halogen will be bonded in meta location. So the name of this compound is meta bromo acetophenol. The whole thing is called acetophenol. So meta bromo acetophenol. So make sure you read carefully and I'm hoping that that's where you can predict these reactions right. Now let's move to different types of problems. Now I'm going to ask you several different definitions. In my study guide also I have mentioned that. I would ask you what is enantiomers, chirality center, chirality center, diastereomer, diastereomer, Meso compound, compound, and optically active. So, what these terms mean, you need to know. Enantiomers, these are non superimposable mirror images of each other. Chirality center, that's the center through which there is no plane of symmetry. And basically, you need to have four different groups bonded in order to get a chiral center. Four different groups bonded. I'm going to show you in a minute. A model is going to help you for this topic coming from chapter 6. And diastereomers are not, these are isomers, these are stereoisomers, but they're not superimposable to each other. And meso compounds, even though they have two chiral centers or more chiral centers, there is a plane of symmetry. So it's overall inactive compound. Optically active means this kind of compounds. When light shines on this compound, polarized light would be tilted to the right or to the left by an angle. If it goes to the right, it's shown with a positive number, and goes to the left, it's called lever rotatory. So right hand side is called, with the clockwise direction, is called. Uh, Dextro rotatory and anticlock would be uh, liver rotatory. So keep that in mind that we may ask you a question on that. I'm going to now show you uh, when to expect non superimposable mirror images. So I made this model for you. I have used different color. So this is carbon. Let's assume that this is hydrogen. And that three others are three other different groups. Now this is a chiral center because I have four different groups bonded. Say one is say Br, then say this one is C, orange one is say, another group which is say oxygen or another group, any, anything that you like. And then this is another group and this is say hydrogen. Now there are four different groups so this is a chiral center or chirality center. And this molecule has one chirality center. Now, if mirror image is going to be non-superimposable mirror, mirror image, if I make it, assume that there's a mirror in between these two molecules, so one is going to be reflected to the other, if you can see it. White would be reflected to the white, green would be reflected to green, and so I got a mirror image here. But the question is, are these identical molecules? If these are identical molecules, they should be 100% superimposable. Let's try to superimpose them. I have white, white, green, green, but look at here. 
the blues are not matching. No matter how I rotate this, I would not be able to superimpose them 100%. That means they are not identical molecules. They are two distinct molecules which are pretty much like your right hand and left hand. They are not superimposable. And, and so this is enantioma. So these are the non-superimposable mirror images of each other are called enantiomers. And these represent enantiomers. And what property each of these isomer has, there is no plane of symmetry. No matter how I cut it, I would not be able to cut it into two identical halves. And that's why these are enantiomers. And the center is called chirality center, having four different groups bonded. And diastereomer, later on we would show you uh, that whenever I have more than one chiral center, I can have a diastereomer, which would be, I can get isomers, but they are not mirror images of each other. And those would be called diastereomer. And these are compounds. Let me make one of those these compounds so that you all understand that how this works. Say I'm going to break one bond here. I strongly recommend that you bring uh, <clears throat> this model before you take the test and also when you study, use the models. Now, I have two centered my molecule here. Both are chiral center or chirality centers. Why? Let's, let's look at this center. This is one group, hydrogen, two, three, and the fourth group is this whole thing. So there are four different groups bonded around this carbon. So that's one chirality center. Let's look at the second one. This is the second one where I'm focusing attention now. This is say hydrogen. And second group, third group, and the whole thing makes the fourth group. So that means I have four different groups bonded around each of these carbons. So I have two chirality centers in this molecule. Now, so I'm assuming that you now understand what chirality center is. Now what is mido compound then? Even though each carbon is a, is a chiral carbon, but look at the whole molecule. I have a plane of symmetry. I can cut this molecule into two identical halves. If you see that if I, my plane goes through this, the right hand side molecule would be identical to my left hand side molecule. So whenever you have more than one chirality center and a plane of symmetry, this is the plane of symmetry that would cut molecule into two identical halves. These are called meso compounds. So meso compounds have chirality centers. They have chirality centers plus plane of symmetry. Since plane of symmetry, they are inactive optically. If there were no plane of symmetry, then it would not be optically inactive. What is optically inactive means if I have a uh, plane polarized light shining on this compound, it would show no rotation to the right or left. And that's optically inactive compound. Next, I'm going to explain to you with the help of the model, what is R and what is S. These are the two labels we use for right hand and left hand side molecule. Let's put back my original structure. Okay, I'm going to show you now that I've gone back to the same thing. One is the mirror image of the other and they're not superimposable. So these are enantiomers, but they're not the same molecule. They're not identical molecule. Now let's focus on this and what kind of molecule we have. Just like we name our both hands, one hand we say right hand, another hand we say left hand. Chemists, organic chemists, rather than using right or left hand, they use R and S. Now there is a rule applied in order to 
identify with this R or S. So you assign priorities to the groups. So group with highest priority would be given number one. So you have, you're looking at carbon here. Let me show you carbon. And then say one is, I have a big compound, big one. Say this is iodine. The blue one is iodine, it's a big atom. And then I need to have, you're looking at it like this. These two are projected to our CO, and that's shown with thick lines. Thick lines means to our CO, and I have the orange ones going backward. So let's now that this is I, this is Br, this is hydrogen, and this one is just make a CL. Now, with this in mind, now let's try to find out how we get RRS. Well, let me draw it a little bit more clearly. Now, the rule is you'll have to look at from a direction away from hydrogen. So, hydrogen is towards you. So, you basically look like the, look at this molecule like this. Hydrogen has to be away from you. Your eyes should be away from hydrogen. And then put your hand on the highest priority group. Highest priority goes by atomic number. So this is the highest group. Let's assume that this is one. One is the highest. Highest priority. Now the rule is pretty sim simple. Pretty much like E and Z type of labeling. If I can make a decision based on the first connected atom, we look for the next atom, next atom, until we see the difference in atomic number. So next in priority is going to be Br. Next is going to be Cl. And the lowest priority is hydrogen. So your I would be away from the lowest priority group, in this case, like this. And so I'm holding, so this is, this is how you find our RRS. This is like a, you assume that this is, this three is going to make a wheel for your driving. So you're just looking at this molecule like this. Hold your hand onto highest priority group. Then move your hand from, to the second highest group. So orange one is the second highest. And then this is the third highest. So going like this. And you're taking a right turn. So if you're taking a right turn, as you go from one to two to three, then it's going to be R. If you're taking a left turn, it's going to be S. So keep that in mind. So let me repeat this. First, assign according to the priorities. The highest priority group based on atomic number gets number one. Second one gets number two. Third one gets number three. The lowest priority gets number four. And your I should be away from the lowest priority group. So in this case, hydrogen would be like this. Then this is my number one, iodine. This is Br. So iodine to Br. So that's the right turn. So assume that you're, this is your wheel. You're turning to the right. And that's R. Now, let's look at this mirror image. Just let me remember that orange was number two. So this is the, my second one, mirror image. Look at here. This is number, this is number one. This is number two. This is the turn I'm looking at, from 1 to 2 to 3. This is a turn. So this is going to be my left turn. So whenever it's left turn, it's going to be S. So what we learn here is mirror images. Even though these are mirror images of each other, one is going to be R, the other one is going to be S. So whenever you take mirror image of an R configuration, you're going to end up with S configuration. Now let's do one problem from the book because you're going to try these and in exam you'd have these kind of questions and again I encourage you to bring a model with you otherwise you may have problem in getting the right answer especially when in this test. So I picked two problems from the book. 
Uh, this is chapter 6, number 9. Okay, I'm going to write down the way it's shown in the book BR, then methyl group, hydrogen with thick line. Thick line is projected towards you, and then we have COOH, CO2H. This is how you should look at it. These two solid lines sitting on the plane. Hydrogen is projected towards you, metal group is away from you, on the other side of the board. Okay, now you're going to assign the priorities. BR at the highest atomic number, guess number one. These two have carbon, so I can't make a decision which one has higher priority. So go to the next bonded atom, which is oxygen in this case. So this gets number two, this gets number three, this gets number four. This is very important that you have these priorities uh, written correctly because otherwise your answer will be wrong. Now your eyes will be away from hydrogen, so your eyes will be on that side. If you're, you'll have to think about this as a three-dimensional figure. And your eyes will be away from hydrogen because this hydrogen is projected towards you, so you'll be like looking at it like this. And then go from Br to CO2H to CH3. Now in this case you'd find that this is how you're doing it, Br to CO2 to CH. So you have to imagine that H is projected like this, and so you're going from Br to CO2H to CH3, and that's the left turn. So this is going to be S. So you should practice doing several other problems that I have assigned. And what would happen if I have more than one chiral center? How can I get that answer? So I'm going to show you that. Now, by the way, if you have the model, that would make your life a lot easier. Whenever you have hydrogen like this shown, that means you hold your model like this. Hydrogen is projected out away from the board. And so you'd be looking at it like this. Now let's pick another problem. So this is going to be chapter 6, number 12. Here we have two centers, C, C, and H and OH with the thick lines. CH3, and then here you have H, CH3, these are all wedged line or thick lines, and then this dotted line means they're away from you. So there are two chirality centers. Look at this, car this carbon. There are four different groups bonded. This is one of them. Second one third one, and the whole thing is the fourth one. So you have to do one chirality center at a time. So let's first focus on this carbon and assign priorities. Obviously, BR would have one because it's the highest priority. Next would be this whole group, big group, that's number two. Methyl would be the third, and this would be the fourth. So you can make a model. You don't have to have build the whole big group, but just use one color as this big group and with, that, with priority two. So you'd be looking at looking at this molecule from this side, away from hydrogen, because hydrogen is projected towards you, and hold your hand on to Br. So go from one to two to three, and you'd find that this center is going to be R. So, so then I'm done with the first chirality center. Now for the second chirality center, your focus would be on the second carbon. So let's do that. Now let's delete this line and reassign priorities. So I'm done with the first one. First one is R. So let's call it R, the top carbon. And now I'm going to assign priorities again. In this case, this is oxygen, 
that gets the highest priority. So number one, so let's make it that's highest priority one. And then here I've carbon bonded. This is going to be the whole big group. And the next one is going to be this one, because this is attached to carbon, this is attached to carbon, the next carbon one is also BR. So this gets priority number two, this is the whole group. This gets priority three, and this is the fourth priority. So you have to imagine this whole molecule now around this second chiral center. Now you're looking at now away from hydrogen, hold on to one, which is OH, Go towards two and then three. So I'm like this one to two to three. So that's the right turn. And if you make a model, that would also uh, help you to quickly get this answer. So this is also R. So I have R and R in this case. So make sure you try problems like these. Then there are some uh, simple examples, I mean, simple uh, questions on definitions. When it comes to optical rotation, I may ask you what does alpha means and what is alpha D means. This is just a simple rotation. This is called a specific rotation. So, so you need to write down the specific rotation. This is specific rotation. It could be like plus 40. Say, for example, the angle is plus 40. This is dextro-rotatory by 40 degree angle going to the right at 40 degree. If it's a minus, it's called levorotatory, counterclockwise rotation. And this is angular rotation per unit length and per unit concentration. So in book, you see this definition. Alpha D is given by... alpha over L times C. So this is angle, angle of rotation. L is the length in decimeter and this is the concentration in gram per ml. So with that you can calculate these, you can find these values. So whenever in book they list like this, that means they are giving you uh, a specific rotation value for a particular compound. And all optical isomers would have these values non-zero, either plus or minus. Now one more thing I should mention to you, if I have two LN tumors mixed together, so mirror image to each other, they're mixed together, you get racemic mixture. So you need to know what racemic mixture is. So two anion tumors mixed together make, make it a racemic mixture. Now this chapter has a question, would have questions on benzene ring. So you may have a question like this where I'd be asking you to name the compound. So I have ethyl group, ethyl group here. There's two ethyl groups here. Now if, you, if you're not familiar with this, put a one carbon here and another carbon here. And rest will be hydrogen, so that carbon get four, gets four bonds. And say I have a phenyl group here. Phenyl group is nothing but benzene. Okay. If you feel more comfortable with this, you can rewrite this. Because in a pH, you can have something like this. Let's write down more clearly. Benzene ring. pH. So pH is same as this. Now let's first find out 
I cannot use cis or trans because of all these four substituent groups attached to the benzene ring, but I can use E or Z. Now, which gets the higher priority? Let's examine this left-hand side, carbon. Here also there is a carbon here. I can make a decision, go to the next bonded one, carbon. This also has carbon. Can't make a decision, so get to the next one. So this gets the higher priority, H, and this gets the lower priority, L. In the same way, on the right side, this gets the higher priority, this gets the lower priority. So both high priorities are on the same side, the low priority is on the same side, and that gives the label Z. And normally write down like this. Now my longest chain is going to let me know what's the name of this compound. This longest chain would have six carbons. One, two, then three 